Hey everybody, we're going to talk about a couple of types of retirement programs that are offered by employers. The two most common types are what are known as defined benefit and defined contribution. Now we're not going to talk about individual retirement accounts like IRAs that you might get from the bank or somewhere else. We're talking about employer paid accounts. Let's define those and we're going to go into a couple other uh, related topics. Uh, relating to those retirement accounts. All right, first, let's define them. Defined benefit program is a retirement program so that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to define what the benefit is after you retire. Defined contribution is we're going to define what the employer contribution is to the pot of money to, to your retirement account. Here's how it works out. In a, in a uh, defined contribution situation, the employer is going to say, employee, you're going to be required to put in up to 3% of your annual pay into this 401k account. In exchange, we're also going to put in 3% or 4% or 5%, whatever their match is. And so as long as you work here, you're going to have, we're going to continue to contribute into this pot of money. Now, when you leave, you're going to have access to your funds. But in terms of the employer's funds, you'll have access to it if you're fully vested. What that means is, is that you've met their time requirement, you've worked there long enough uh, as per their requirements to be eligible to have access to not only your money, but also their money as well. Provided you're fully vested, we'll come back to this in a second. Provided you're fully vested, then when you leave the organization, whether it's because you resign or you retire or whatever, then you're going to take with you your portion of the retirement fund that you contributed, as well as the employer's portion or whatever you're eligible to receive. You're going to take that together. That's the pot of money. Let's assume that you're going to leave for retirement purposes. You've worked for this organization for 20 or 30 years. You've put in money, they've put in money. A defined contribution simply means they've defined how much that they were going to put into this account year after year. Once you retire, that account is basically yours. It's typically a mutual account, some kind of, some kind of a similar account. But basically, there's your money, good luck. Work with your financial advisor, work with somebody else, and you're going to draw from that account month after month after you're retired, and that's what you're going to have to live on. In a defined benefit program, the employer is going to say, employee, you're required, if you want to participate, to contribute this much, and in exchange, we'll provide this much. Same vesting process that after, you know, year after year, you're going to put in some money, they're going to put in some money. The difference here is that when you reach that age of retirement, once you retire from, uh, from that organization or once you become eligible to retire, then you're going to have access to the money, but you're going to have a guaranteed amount that's going to be sent to you month after month. And so let's say, for example, that I was making $50,000 a year when I retired. And the program, this defined benefit program is that once I retire, I will receive 80% of my last year's paycheck year after year after year, maybe with a cost of living adjustment. What that means is that my defined benefit or the benefit that's defined for me after I retire is that every single year I'm going to receive $40,000, typically paid on a monthly basis, as part of a standard traditional pension type of a program. So defined contribution is we're dumping a bunch of money into an account and when you leave that account is yours. Defined benefit is here we're dumping the money into an account, but when you leave, this is what the benefit is that you're going to continue to receive year after year until it's exhausted. So that's the basics. Those are the nuts and bolts of, of defined benefit versus defined contribution. Um, it gets a little stickier than that. There's a whole lot of rules that go along with each one. Not every organization is going to have both. Uh, most organizations have switched over to the defined contribution. Why is that? You know, in the past, if you go back into the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, if you'd worked for an organization for a long time, you know, maybe you worked your, there your whole career, the expectation was that the employer would provide some kind of a pension, some kind of a defined contribution, or excuse me, defined benefit retirement plan. So that in exchange for you having served them for 30 or 40 years of your career, they're going to take care of you in retirement. So that's that's the ongoing process. What that does, does for an organization, however, is it creates a liability that's ongoing. It never ends until the employee basically dies. And so, sure, we can project that the employee is going to live for another 10 years after retirement. But what happens when they live for 15 years, and for 20 years, and for 30 years? 
with the new modern medicines and, and, and people staying healthy longer, people are living longer. So what that means for us as an organization is we put this much money aside year after year while they're working for us. However, we can't, we can't define how long we're going to have to continue to pay that out. It creates just an amazing headache and a lingering liability for an organization. That's why we've switched over to these defined contribution because we're going to pay in, right? We pay in a certain amount of money with the hopes and the expectation that this is going to be enough for them to live on after they retire. However, once the employee leaves, that's it. The employer really doesn't have to worry about it any longer. It's not their headache, it's not their mess. They shift all that risk and liability and responsibility over to the employee. So anyway, there are a lot, of more, lot more pros and cons. There are a lot more details that go into it. But what I was hoping to do is at least give you some kind of verbal explanation of the difference between defined contribution and defined benefit, and hopefully that helps out. However, be sure to link be, uh, list below this link uh, any questions that you have, and we can discuss them in the news group. Thanks.